This video is part of a course on food physics of which this belongs to the modeling section. It is the second one, second one here of a five part series on error, uncertainty and validation. Um, here we give overview of the different types of error. The following video, this one, will get into more details of one type of error. Um, you can stop this video now and think for a few seconds or minutes about the types of errors that come to your mind when you are doing a computation or when you are doing modeling of a process. Many different types of errors are possible as listed here. Before we get into the details of each one of them, let's just acknowledge uh, the, the one type of error that uh, can be there uh, and that is just unacknowledged error or mistake. Unacknowledged errors, we can simply think of them as uh, mistakes. Uh, they are controllable through proper training. So let's look at two kinds of them. One is this computer programming error or bugs. Now, and the other one would be uh, usage error. So computer programming error, we should realize that if we are using a commercial software that has been around for some time, we shouldn't think of that software having a bug the first time we run into problem with the computation. It is unlikely for the simple problems. For example, um, it, you know, to, to uh, have a bug uh, in a commercial highly used software, but of course, bugs are possible. Then we get into usage error. That can be many types. It can be lack of understanding of the physics, meaning the software that we are using and the way it's implementing a physics isn't exactly what we are trying to do. So there's a mismatch between what the software thinks and and what the user is thinking. Um, then we have incorrect data, data input, which is very common. Then wrong units. Remember, as a user of a software, it's the user that is responsible for uh, keeping the units um, consistent uh, throughout the computation. Now, uh, we could uh, provide wrong governing equation, boundary conditions, or properties. It's not a, a um, it's not software's fault. We're just using it the wrong way. We input the, the wrong properties or the wrong boundary condition. And finally, um, when the software um, gets into difficulties and it gives error messages, we shouldn't just ignore and go on. We should try to see what is really going on to try to learn and make sure that we are using the software correctly. So all these relate uh, more to using um, commercial or third party written software, which has become more, more or less standard as we are trying to um, do modeling of processes. Now we get to the most important of the errors, the physical approximation error. Physical approximation error is error due to mathematical approximation of a, a physical reality. So in a modeling process, a food process is re replaced by its simplified mathematical equivalent or a model. Now, a model is never an exact representation of reality. So this process 
of replacing a physical process with this mathematical equivalent is called problem formulation. And the problem formulation never leads to an exact replica of the real thing. There's always assumptions that we have to make. Um, so in this example of a canning process, so this is the can and it's, it's put inside uh, this retort and the door is closed and it's heated. And so this process, again, this world's simplest process, as I have said before, is just heating of a can of solid foods. And we're interested in how it, uh, the, how the bacteria inside is destroyed and simultaneously how the nutrient are destroyed. Uh, this is the physical process and we are replacing that by a, a mathematical equivalent. So the mathematical equivalent will have a schematic. For example, we could use symmetry here. So we could use symmetry. Now that symmetry may or may not be valid. So right there, we start making assumptions. Um, then um, I get my governing equations. So governing equations in this case will have the equation for heat transport, the bacterial transport or the bacterial destruction, kinetics, nutrient transport or nutrient uh, destruction, kinetics. And so we get equations like that those describe the process together with the boundary conditions. And then also, of course, we need initial conditions because it's a transient process. Now, the error, of course, there's also properties and parameters. The error that we make in replacing the physical process, the physical process with its simplified mathematical equivalent is, uh, you know, we're replacing a real process with a bunch of equations. This is the physical approximation error. This error cannot be zero. No matter how complicated a formulation we do, there's, all, there's still assumptions. In the next two slides, that you can pause and try to answer few questions that we raise in applying the concept that we just learned, that what is physical approximation error. So for example, in meat cooking, uh, on the left is my physical problem of uh, the, the meat patty being grilled. And on the right is my mathematical formulation. So in this case, I'm, I, if I replace the entire meat cooking by just heat conduction equation, so this is nothing but heat uh, conduction with no other complication and the boundary conditions being heat flux at the bottom and convection at the top. Suppose I have this as the model for meat cooking. Uh, it's likely to be not great because meat cooking is more complex. So how does one reduce the error due to this mathematical approximation? How can we uh, have a more improved description of the model that will get closer to reality? This also would be a good time to think about what kind of math, math approximation error, appro errors due to mathematical approximation of physical reality are likely to be present in your project. This assumes that you are thinking of a project as you are watching this video. Now we get to the second most important error in modeling. It is the discretization error. So let's take a simple look at this uh, discretization error. So let's say we are trying to solve this equation 
which looks very simple but it does not have a nice closed form analytical solution and so the real solution if I plot if somehow I have the solution um, function as a, a f as a function of x it's this one okay so the real one is like that but like this simple equation the most of the practical problems in modeling we do not have closed form analytical solution so we have to solve some other way and we end up solving numerically so the idea of numerical solution is simply this i replace the derivative with a, a, a difference so i write f at x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x which is an approximation for this as equal to e to the e x square so f at x plus delta x is equal to f of x plus e to x square times delta x. So notice that this is just an algebraic equation that can march. If I have the value at x, if I have the value f of x, I can calculate f of x plus delta x and I can keep doing it. So if I start uh, if I have the value at 0, then I can calculate the next one and the next one. And I do not need any other solution uh, process. And so by doing that, I'm going to get this solution uh, for a particular uh, choice of delta x. Now, you notice that here this continuous field which this was is replaced by a discrete field that is the numerical solution and in that process we make some errors so this is the error that we make in this example and how do we reduce this error it's kind of obvious that uh, the way to reduce the error is we just take this delta make this delta x this is my delta x right we just make it smaller and so by making smaller we can get closer and closer to this solution and so we can just make it arbitrarily small but there is a cost to it what is the cost that um, by taking uh, by taking smaller steps here the delta x which in the case of finite element method this could be smaller elements or in a transient process it could be smaller time step by making these smaller then we are increasing the amount of computing resources and it's quite serious for a large problem so we have to balance between these larger elements or steps that can do the computation quickly but is not going to be as accurate it will make more discretization error and um, versus smaller steps that would reduce discretization error but it's more computation this is the basic idea of reducing discretization error is to go for smaller and smaller uh, elements or time steps and here is a quick example uh, we're doing computation on a geometry that has a hole in it a large mesh this one is going to give a solution uh, that uh, doesn't look like it, it's kind of nice and smooth when i go to a, a finer mesh then it gives a smoother solution then we'll talk about later how do we exactly decide when to stop how do you decide 
the mesh is fine enough it's called mesh convergence and that's discussed uh, later another common error we have in computation is iterative convergence error what do we mean by iterative convergence error so let's say we have this set of equations um, three equations that we can solve for x1 x2 x3 we can do many different ways one of the ways is to solve this iteratively as opposed to directly that we are used to solving for small systems in the um, uh, earlier classes in in college um, instead we can solve these iteratively because there are benefits for it, solving them iteratively uh, it needs less memory for example um, so to solve them iteratively i'm going to rewrite the equations so i'll write x1 x1 is equal to 0.3333 x2 uh, minus 0.1667 x3 plus 1.8333 so likewise i'll write x1 uh, x2 and x3 equal to and when, so if i do that the equations look like this now of course x1 x2 x3 they're all unknowns so there are unknowns sitting on the right hand side and there are of course unknowns on the left hand side so what we would do is for the right hand side we're going to use some sort of a guess guess x1 x2 x3 to get started and so as we plug in the guess then we will get a new set of x1 x2 x3 and that would be supposedly improved values of x1 x2 x3 so to repeat the process uh, we're going to say that whatever um, we have now the current value that is my nth iteration and when i plug in nth iteration i get an estimate for the n plus one nth iteration um, and i keep repeating the process so i plug this in and then get, get a new set of values then i plug those back in there and, and so this is how it's going to look so suppose i have uh, my initial guess here as to be zero 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 and i plug in zeros then of course i get my uh, improved value of x1 x2 x3 are these values because the rest of it are zero then i plug these in here and then i get the next set of values and i keep doing this i keep doing this until these values do not change as as much or they stop changing so which is when we say uh, iterations have converged but and so we have to stop this eventually we cannot go on forever but no matter when we stop it's going to have some error and th there is not much we can do about it we just have to make that error very small so that it has no effect on the calculations and so there's no way to guess beforehand what this tolerance is going to be what this tolerance needs to be um, now if you have a solution and you kind of suspect maybe things have not converged then you reduce the tolerance meaning instead of matching at maybe the three digits maybe you say it matches at five digits seven digits like that uh, and so so then it will do more iterations and therefore more computations um, okay so this is the iterative convergence error typically in 
many of the problems, if not most, uh, that we deal with, a iterative convergence error is not a big problem uh, in at least the standard commercial software. Another one of these errors that one could hear of is computer round of error. It's actually not very significant, but since we hear about it, let's just go over as to what it is. So the round of error refers to computer's inherent limitation of carrying a finite number of decimal places. It does not carry infinite number of decimal places because there are fixed space for a number. So the numbers are typically stored in 1632 or 64 bits. Today, mostly we are talking about 64 bits. Um, in the past, um, or even now, if you suspect that round of error could be a issue, then you just run the code at higher precision. So there are ways to run the code at higher precision. Again, we are talking about it, but this is not a problem in um, today's uh, computing. So we just want to be aware of what is round of error. And in that process, we want to know a little bit of how numbers are stored in the computer. So numbers are stored this way. So let's say we're talking about a 64-bit um, computer, then we have um, we have numbers stored not as a fraction, but in this format where you your 64 bit of uh, of the 64 bit 52 bit are this fraction, and um, 11 bits are exponent and then one bit is the sign. And so what are these fraction and exponent? So any number is converted in this format. Any number is converted in this format. And so this S would be the sign and then one plus fraction. So this fraction is the one that will be stored in this 52 bits and then the exponent here. And so this is how the number X is going to be stored in 64 bits. So before I go on to this slide, the last slide and this one and a couple more are from this source. And I very much want to acknowledge that. I hope it was okay to use uh, those slides. So, Going back to this 64-bit ways of uh, storing, then would have, uh, by the way, this 64-bit word, it means the memory of the computer is chunked into this word. So each word um, it, uh, is carrying a number and the number is 60, for 64 bit, you have sign the first bit, then exponent the next 11 bit, bits here in green, and then the ones in uh, pink are the, the fraction. So if you go to 32 bit instead, then there is less space for the exponent and less space for the fraction. So Going from here to here, um, this, by the way, is the number. This is the number that is stored in terms of these uh, sign and exponent and, and fraction. Uh, increasing the number of digits, meaning if you go from 32 to 64, decreases the round of error because now you have more space, uh, more number of bits to carry the, the number, so therefore you can carry more in decimal places, for example. Um, so, so now, before we got, I get, go on to the next slide, you notice 
what would be the maximum value or the minimum value a, a um, word can carry so the maximum value would be there is a one everywhere because each one each memory location is binary is it can have zero or one so the maximum number would be one in all places so how much is that let's see so the maximum value would be one in all of the digits so all 52 digits of the fraction and then all 11 digits of the exponent that gives this number which is huge this is the number 1.7977 times 10 to the 3 uh, 308 and then the minimum value would be all zeros so it's 2.2251 times 10 to the minus 308 it's a very small number numbers larger than the maximum value cannot be represented by the computer so it will give an overflow error so any value bigger than this is set to infinity meaning th this is what we mean by round of error and so any value uh, bigger than this uh, there's not much we can do uh, it, it's set to infinity and um, it's uh, it becomes an error now number smaller than the minimum value cannot be represented so we, we do nothing if it is so there will be a hole at zero or it's an underflow error so anything smaller than this is set to zero so that at least that you can see very clearly that it's a round of error but look at the number it has to be smaller than this that's a very small number and that's why round of error is not considered significant when compared with other errors so this is not something we need to worry about we discuss this just so that you know what it is and the fact that it is not significant this is a repeat of the uh, previous slide summarizing so numbers larger than this cannot be represented and gives a overflow error numbers smaller than this cannot be represented and set to zero it gives an underflow error uh, and so that's what we mean by this round of error so the most significant of the errors in the modeling uh, simulation processes are going to be the physical approximation error and the discretization error those are the ones that we really really have to watch out for and they can completely change uh, the the quality of the model and the final output that we get may or may not have anything to do with the actual physical system if we don't do thing, things right um, now of course unacknowledged error or mistakes can overshadow everything and we discussed ways to reduce these errors as well um, and so again physical approximation error uh, we discussed how to reduce them and then discretization error uh, we, we have a separate uh, video to discuss how we follow the discretization error and how we reduce it in fact the very next video this one here uh, shows the details of how we can go about reducing discretization error